Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments and in this opportunity we're going to talk about the convenience of using those two additional ports that most of Unify switches have which are the SFP and the SFP Plus module ports that are going to let you use them as fiber ports with all the advantages that this implies as well as the additional RJ45 ports using the SFP or SFP Plus transceivers for which we're going to leave you the links in the description. One of the great advantages of implementing fiber optic links is that we can go well beyond the limitations that copper has using multi-mode fiber as we can have for example 500 meter links and we can go as far as 10 kilometers with single mode fiber 2.0 without having to invest much in our equipment. Another great advantage of using fiber is that when we have limited resources and we have to use limited piping for electricity and networking, our only way out is to use such electrical conduits with optic fiber for our networking needs and avoid interference and risk of electrical surges. Of course, this is not the technical option, but an alternative for small budgets or a temporary layout. And finally, and not less important, and a lot of people are gonna understand us here, the risk of a direct lightning strike in many campuses may be a headache for many network administrators, even when we have been able to get our hands on many alternate surge protection equipment that sometimes are very expensive and do not provide the protection that we had hoped. So, for this very simple workshop, we're gonna be using these cables today. Uh, we're going to leave you the links in the description. Basically, we're going to use single mode 2.0 and OM3 for single mode and multi-mode fiber, respectively. Um, and at a very good price, these Tangitech and 6COM SFP and SFP Plus modules prove to work very well with all Unify switches. Uh, this is the scenario that we have. These are the modules that we're going to be using, and these are the cables that we're going to pair with each one of the corresponding SFP or SFP Plus modules. We strongly recommend you watch our video uh, regarding SFP and SFP Plus modules. So if you're getting ready to buy your first SFP or SFP Plus modules, you have to be very careful with this. If you're going to use an SFP or SFP Plus module for multi-mode fiber, you have to use multi-mode fiber. If you're going to use single-mode fiber, you have to use the corresponding single-mode SFP or SFP Plus module. We're going to be testing our links for the Unify switches with three brands mainly. Uh, this one, which are the 10G Tech that have worked very well for months with us, 6COM, which is another alternative, and of course the Ubiquiti Unify um, SFP and SFP Plus modules. Up to now, we have had a great experience with these 10G Tech modules. Okay. We always have to give a final check of if the module that we're buying is for the equipment or not. Telemetry is the only one uh, that can be severely affected if we buy the wrong module for our equipment. We also recommend you watch our video regarding media converters for fiber and copper transitions with small budgets. So we're watching two very different things right now. Right here, an SFP module from 10G Tech with link speeds of one gigabit per second over multi-mode fiber and right here, an SFP Plus module from 6COM with link speeds of 10 gigabit per second over single mode fiber 2.0. This one is multi-mode fiber OM3 and this one single mode 2.0. So what does it all mean? This means that either of these two type of fiber optic will be able to handle 10 gigabit per second connection links depending of course on the module that we use. Multi-mode for short distances and single mode for long range transmissions. So let's make a couple of examples regarding linking and configuration if needed. For this workshop scenario, we're going to use this Unify switch, the Unify US16XG, a very powerful switch from Unify, very well suited for equipment rooms and traffic convergence. I recommend our video about it, and in which each one of these ports is capable of running at 10 gigabit per second, but I'm going to show you how to correctly configure from the network controller so it will successfully link at 1 gigabit per second when both ends do not have 10 gigabit per second modules such as in this case in which we're going to connect to this Unify US24, also a very powerful switch from Ubiquiti, with 24 ports running at 1 gigabit per second. 
It also has two possible SFP links also at one gigabit per second and considering that due to power over Ethernet Plus, you may have very miscellaneous equipment connected to it. You may need a fiber uplink to your main network. Let's say the US 16XG at a remote location will connect it through this port number seven that hypothetically can be remotely located at an office a few hundred meters apart or even kilometers. Copper in this case is not an option as it is limited to just 100 meters. This port, for example, we're just gonna connect it or uplink it to our main network or our gateway, in this case, a UDM Pro, Unified Dream Machine Pro. So let's do it and let's connect right here to port number seven. One important aspect when managing SFP modules is that you do not have to power off the switch in order for you to connect it. For example, right here, we're going to connect the SFP module to this uh, switch, it is already on. We're just going to hot plug it and we will be able to use it in no time. This one is a 10G tech. Let's remember that this one is a single mode optic fiber SFP module, and it will link at a speed of one gigabit per second with this one, which is an SFP plus module that will link at 10 gigabit per second. Of course, this one has to be configured. So you will have a link of one gigabit per second. Let's connect it at both ends uh, in this switch and in this switch. Let's connect it and see what happens. There is no order in which to connect and these LC connectors will just plug in in just one way. It should have already connected right here and as you can see, the link hasn't come up. That is due to the fact that we need to make a small configuration in this port. So let's go to the network application or the network controller and see what we have to configure in order for our link to come up. We're gonna select right here overview. Uh, I usually like to capture screen right here. I'm gonna do it this way just for today. I'm gonna go to settings. Uh, this one is the model that we have uh, in the US 16XG. Let's go to the port number seven. As you can see, it detects the SFP plus module, but you will have to come over here to the port profile over right and select auto negotiation to one gigabit per second. It has to be configured to one gigabit per second for your um, switch to establish the link. Let's apply settings so the switch will provision the information and once it provisions it will come up in just a few seconds. As you can see right here it has established link between these two switches at one gigabit per second. Uh, let's remember that this is multi-mode fiber that we're using and these two switches are connecting. Uh, they are right here at a few centimeters apart, but they could be actually kilometers apart. Let's uplink them, uh, these two switches to this USA to the main network. And we're going to connect it right here to the port number 11. And exactly the same way we did with port number seven, we're gonna do with this one. Let's remember that I had connected previously with a fiber cable, and this is very important that you understand that you have to do all these configurations uh, when you have them in place, and do not wait until you have the equipment in remote locations in which link has not been established and you cannot provision any information to the switches. This is something very important as these cables uh, do not provide you with uh, an instant uh, link capability. And I have seen a lot of people waste a lot of time moving equipment from one location to another remote location just because they forgot to provision the switches before they were actually having an active link. In this case, this link will come up after I configure it through this copper link. Let's do it. Let's go to, uh, in this case, port number 11. Let's go to port profile over right and again select from auto negotiation to one gigabit per second. Apply changes so the switch will provision all the information and the link will come up again in a few moments as you can see right here port number 11. Then now we are ready to remove this cable as now the active link is being routed through this port number 11 to this switch so you can have an active connection very easily. Now, our second part of the video, links of up to 10 kilometers apart, in which we would have to use a single mode fiber. We're gonna use this switch with this module from 6Com, it's an SFP plus module, single mode fiber for an SFP plus module, both of them being able and capable of transmitting information at 10 gigabit per second. Super fast review, single mode optic fiber for single mode 
uh, SFP plus module. In this case, this six com SFP plus module that I'm gonna connect right here to port number nine. Uh, in this case, the USXG. And right here, I'm going to link it to a UDM Pro. Okay, so both of them being able to link at 10 gigabit per second, as you'll see right here. It links at 10 gigabit per second, which is indicated by a white LED light. Something very important at this specific moment is that these two ports are communicating with the same area of the remote network through different ports and switches. And that is possible only because in my network I have specified that spanning tree protocol is active, something that we have discussed in other videos. So I cannot only remove any of these two cables as each one is acting as a backup of the other one, but also it will provide me with fail-safe operation of my network. So that is exactly how you can take advantage of those two additional ports that most of modern switches have with all those great advantages that that implies. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember that the objective of creating this material is for us to be able to share what we know. Please remember that you support us by liking it and subscribing to our channel. See you next time.